Hi everyone, Yasas Kekalos Sirfata to another episode of Dimitra's Dishes. Today we're gonna to be making a three-layered lemon cake that's gonna be moist, delicious, and just beautiful to look at too. Three layers of lemon cake, a lemon curd filling, and a cream inside as well, and a mascarpone cream lemony frosting. It's like a burst of sunshine. Beautiful to look at, perfect for any special occasion. And I'm gonna show you how easy it is to put together. Let's get started. We're gonna begin by making the lemon curd and uh, I'm making a little bit extra because this is nice to have on hand. You're gonna to wanna to start off with six egg yolks in a bowl, then add to that one and a half cups of granulated sugar, one stick of butter, which is four ounces, just cut it into little pieces, four tablespoons of zest, which is the zest of four lemons. When you're zesting lemons, you wanna make sure that you get just that shiny part of the lemon. That's where all of the flavor is. Once you get to the white part, don't zest that. That's very bitter and you don't want any bitter flavor in this cake. Then you need half a cup of juice. I'm juicing all of these lemons and it's more, it's gonna probably be more than a half cup because there's, these are bigger lemons, but we're gonna need it for the cake and for the other parts of the recipe. Then you're gonna to wanna to fill up a saucepan about three quarters of the way up with water and bring it to a boil. Once it boils, reduce the heat so that way it's simmering and put the heat proof bowl on top with your all the lemon curd ingredients in there and then start mixing. It's gonna take about 10 minutes for the lemon curd to reach the right temperature. Once the butter starts to melt, you'll know that you're almost there. If the, if the water underneath is very hot, you'll see that it will start to get pale and thicken, that's fine. But if it's thin like mine is this time, that's also fine. Cook it for about 10 minutes and you'll know that it is ready to go. Take it off of the heat and then you're gonna to wanna to put a little piece of plastic on top so that way it doesn't form a skin. Set it aside to cool completely. At this point, you can freeze this lemon curd up in freezer-proof containers for like three or four months. It stays fresh for a very long time. It's great because you can make this weeks before you're gonna make this cake. Now we're gonna go on and we're gonna make the pastry cream. The pastry cream is not a must. I did test this recipe over the weekend with just the lemon curd and everyone loved it, but I'm used to adding a creamy component in my cakes since the bakery days. It just elevates them, makes them taste so much better, and also cuts a little bit of the lemony taste, which is nice because there's lots of lemon flavor in this cake and the pastry cream will help make it even better. We've made pastry cream on this channel so many times. It's so easy to make and I'm making more than we need today because the kids love this. So I'm, I'm gonna have some for the cake and the rest for us to snack on. So I'm gonna give you the measurements for one batch, but keep in mind, I'm making two. So you're gonna to wanna to measure out two cups of whole milk and three quarters of a cup of sugar. Now put the milk in the saucepan and about half a cup of the sugar in the saucepan as well. That's gonna keep the milk from burning as it heats. Put it over medium heat so it can cook nice and slow while you prepare the eggs. So we're gonna need four egg yolks, just the yolks, and put that in a little bowl with the rest of the sugar. You're gonna need four tablespoons of cornstarch, that's gonna be the thickening agent, a quarter cup of cream, you're gonna mix that all together. And once the milk is steaming hot, we're gonna temper this mixture. So pour most of the milk mixture in the egg mixture and whisk it all together, then transfer everything back into the pan and cook it, whisking it continuously, constantly, over medium heat. As soon as it comes to a boil, you're gonna see that it's gonna thicken take it off of the heat, keep whisking, and add two teaspoons of pure vanilla extract. Whisk, whisk, whisk until it's nice and smooth, and then transfer it to a bowl. Cover that with plastic wrap as well if you don't like a skin on top of your pastry cream, and then set it aside to cool completely. The pastry cream can be made two to three days ahead of time, and you don't wanna freeze that, keep that refrigerated, so that's that. Now we're gonna move on to the next step, which is the syrup. Now, adding syrup to uh, cake layers is a bakery uh, secret, a baker sick secret. If you've gotten cakes from a bakery and they're extra moist and they just don't come out just like the way you make them at home, that's because when we make cakes, we like to put a nice little generous brushing of simple syrup on top of them. That keeps the cake layers super moist. So the syrup is very easy. It's also optional. So if you don't want that much sugar in your dessert, you can leave the syrup out, but it's super simple to make. Okay, I have one cup of sugar in this little saucepan. I'm gonna add one cup of water and about a quarter of a cup of lemon juice. I already have lemon juice here from before. Let me catch the seeds. And I'm just gonna cook this over medium heat, whisking it constantly until it comes to a boil and the sugar melts. 
So next we're gonna make the cake layers and we're gonna begin with the dry ingredients. So we're gonna need three cups or 360 grams of all-purpose flour, three teaspoons of baking powder, two tablespoons of cornstarch. It's gonna make it really nice and light. A little pinch of salt, about half a teaspoon, and about two tablespoons of lemon zest. That's the zest of two lemons. And once you're done, put that all in a big bowl and whisk it all together. And then just juice, juice one and a half of the lemons. You're gonna need about a third of a cup of the lemon juice for the cake. Now we're gonna move on to making the wet ingredients. So I'm using my tabletop mixer with the whisk attachment because it makes life so much easier. I have one and a half cups of granulated sugar. That is 300 grams. To that, I'm gonna add one stick of unsalted butter that's nice and soft and at room temperature. I like to combine a little bit of butter with oil to my cake to keep them really nice and moist. Whenever I can, I do that. If you don't wanna use the oil, you can use all butter. Uh, and you can definitely use all oil too, but the butter really adds that, that flavor and you need it. So one stick of butter, that's four ounces. Half a cup of light olive oil. This is where you wanna use a light oil, not the really good quality, expensive olive oil that you use on your salads. If you don't have light olive oil, you can probably get away with using a light coconut oil because coconut and lemon does go good together, but you are gonna have some of that coconut flavor left in there. Use whatever light vegetable oil that you like and that you trust. <laughs> and I'm also gonna add a teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. I usually go heavy on the vanilla, but since this is a lemon cake, I'm, very, I'm going very light-handed on it. So one teaspoon is all you need. Mix that all together. While that's mixing, I'm just gonna break three eggs into this bowl, and then I'm gonna add them to the mixer. And then while those are mixing, you want them to get nice and fluffy. We need a third of a cup of the fresh lemon juice. And I'm gonna transfer it into this bowl, even though there was a third of a cup in here, I thought it was more. And we need half a teaspoon of baking soda. I like to mix the baking soda in the liquid so that way it melts and it doesn't give that bitter taste in the cake. Sometimes you know you get it, you bite into a piece of baking soda in a cake and it hasn't been incorporated well and just tastes awful. So mix it in with the acid and that won't happen and it bubbles up right away. So now I'm gonna add the lemon juice with the baking soda to the mixing bowl. And we also need three quarters of a cup of milk. Whatever's left in here, I'll mix it in the bowl and pour it in. You want everything to be at room temperature. Your mixture is gonna look curdled. Don't worry about it. As soon as the flour goes in, it's gonna become smooth again and the cake is gonna be moist and delicious. And it's always a good idea to go in and mix the sides and the bottom of the bowl so everything incorporates evenly and now we're just going to add the flour a, a little bit at a time once it's all mixed in then you're going to stop mixing so that way the cake is nice and light over mixing is going to give you a very dense cake just fold it in one more time to get anything that might be stuck at the bottom or the sides of the bowl Okay, I have three eight inch round cake pans that I've lined with parchment paper. I've also sprayed them with baking spray. You can brush them with butter or with oil. And now I'm gonna transfer the batter in here as evenly as I can. You can use a kitchen scale for this to be more precise. The way I like to do it, I get a big ice cream scoop and then I just put one scoop in each pan so that way everything is nice and even. But definitely if you have a kitchen scale, this would be a good time to use it so that way all of your cake layers are even. Just spread them out so that they're nice and even. It's also a good idea to tap these on the counter, just to kind of flatten them out even more and get all the air out. And now they're ready for the oven. My oven is preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. These are gonna bake on the center rack for between 21 to 25 minutes. You'll know they're ready when they're golden on top and a toothpick that's inserted into the center comes out clean. Try not to overbake them. Check them at about the 21 minute mark. And if they're done, they're done. If you overbake them, then you're gonna need more syrup to, to get them moist. Once they come out, let them cool completely. And then we're gonna, it's gonna be time to frost them and put it all together. Okay, it's time to assemble the cake. The lemon curd still needed a little bit more time to set. If you're making it ahead of time, it is 100% best to do that because it does take a little time to set. You can, you can cook it a little bit longer so it can thicken while it's hot and then it thickens much faster as it cools. Mine is still a little bit too runny, 
but we're going to use it anyway and I'm going to show you that you can still do it this way but it is better that it either sets overnight either in the freezer or in the refrigerator or you cook it a little bit longer until it's nice and pale and thick over the double boiler. For the frosting, you're going to need eight ounces of full fat high quality, really good quality cream cheese. This is not the place to use anything low fat. And 16 ounces or one pound of really good mascarpone cheese. Mascarpone cheese is creamy and mild and light and the cream cheese has some tang and a little bit more flavor. If you can't find the mascarpone cheese, then just use straight cream cheese. It's going to be a little bit of a heavier frosting, but it's up to you. I'm going to add a teaspoon of pure vanilla extract, three tablespoons of the lemon curd, and one to one and a half cups of powdered or confectioner sugar. You can start with one and taste as you go and you could sweeten it to your liking. And just whip this up until everything is nice and smooth. That tastes so good. It does seem a little bit too thick for me, so I'm gonna thin it out with about two, three tablespoons of heavy whipping cream. And I'm also gonna go in and add another tablespoon of the lemon curd. I will like it very lemony. And that looks perfect. You can thin it out a little bit more if you like a little bit of a thinner uh, frosting. Now we're gonna put it all together. So I have a pastry bag, a reusable pastry bag here that's fitted with a large open tip star attachment. The links for this will be on the website in the recipe card so that way you can find them online. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put as much of the frosting as I can in here without overfilling the bag. You never want to go more than halfway up or three quarters of the way up max. And then it's nice to get these cardboards, these cake cardboards. They make it very easy to decorate a cake and also easy to transfer them onto your serving platter. So I like to take one layer at a time. These are, have cooled completely and put them on the cake board upside down so that way the flat side is up. Then I'm gonna take some of this lemon syrup that I made and just brush it all over the top, concentrating on the sides because the sides of the cake tend to dry out the most when they're, you know, during the baking time. And you could soak this as much as you want. The more syrup you put, the more moist your cake will be. Then we're gonna pipe a ring of mascarpone frosting all around the, the border of the cake. This is gonna hold everything in place. Thick layer of the lemon curd. And like I said, this is a little bit thinner than I would like it to be, but it will work. Now if you have another piping bag, you could pipe the cream in the bag so that way it comes out smoother. Or you can whip this up really quickly, which I should have done. <laughs> Pastry cream tends to thicken as it sits in the fridge or in the freezer. So whipping it up really quickly, either in the mixer or using a hand blender, gets it really nice and smooth. If you're not into pastry cream, feel free to just put a layer of the mascarpone cream on top or the lemon curd on its own, or you could top it with some berries instead, blackberries and blueberries, raspberries, all of them would work. Then we're gonna take the next layer and put it on top, press it down just a little bit. It kind of holds it and glues it in place. And if you see that the cake is sort of lopsided or leaning on one side, all you have to do is put a little bit more frosting on that side and that's gonna even it out. Or you could put the thicker side of the final cake layer on that side. Press down a little bit. Now, I highly recommend that at this point you put it in the freezer for about 30 minutes or an hour so that way everything sets. It's going to make it so much easier to ice and I am going to do that while I clean up a little bit. 
If you were to go and ice it right now, that ice, that frosting is very thick and it'll, it'll continuously move the cake around and uh, make your life very difficult. Okay, so when you're decorating the cake, it's best to start by applying some of the frosting to the sides of the cake and then using an offset spatula, just keep turning it and sticking it to the sides of the cake and smoothing it out the best way you can. If this is your first time doing it, don't worry too much about getting it perfect. You could even make swirls with the spatula so that way it has a little bit of a decorative touch and that way you don't have to worry about making it look perfect. Then go ahead and ice the top of the cake and smooth it out completely. Pipe eight rosettes on top of that by making little swirls and then I like to dollop some of the lemon curd on top of the rosettes. If the lemon curd hasn't set and it's kind of runny, you could even make a little bit of a drip all around the cake by putting some dollops of the lemon curd in between the rosettes and it'll drip down the side of the cake and make it look really nice and pretty. If, you're, if you use a cake board, then you can transfer it easily to a serving platter and then it's ready to serve. It is a good idea to let this set a little bit, but um, it's best to serve this at room temperature because the cake does have butter in it. So when you refrigerate it, it is the cake layers are going to harden a little bit. So if you are making this a day ahead of time, take it out about an hour or two before you're gonna serve it so the cake can reach room temperature and it'll be the best. Make some coffee and then go ahead and serve it. It is time for the taste test. And just look at how easily the spoon just slices through. That's how moist and soft the cake is. Mm. So refreshing, light, lemony, creamy. The frosting is just perfect. The lemon curd makes it just the perfect amount of lemony, <laughs> if that makes sense. The exact measurements are on the website, www.dimitrisdishes.com. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. And if you wanna learn how to make a mango cream cake, click over here and I'll see you right over there. Yes, us.